I'm Harry Frazier. Um, I'm currently in seventh grade at A.L.F. Stanback, and I'm 12 years old. Uh, I'm Sarah Lutz. I'm 16. I'm a senior and I go to Cedar Ridge High School. Yes. AP Psychology. A friend of mine and Jim uh, is not treated equally in my opinion because you know, people just, uh, they feel like they have something better to do with their time, I'm sure. And, uh, they really just don't take much care of the uh, other students like that. Um, I think that unless a student is obviously upset or in distress in any way, uh, the teachers really, uh, just kind of stick with teaching um I feel like um they're not doing the, the, the worst that they could do but they're not doing the best either um we do have three guidance counselors though uh which is very nice I know all three of them are very nice people um uh and uh I think that they definitely help a lot of people but a lot of people don't go there for help often and they are just overlooked and I really honestly just don't think anything is being done there uh, and I think that it's something that half the administrators and staff are probably not even thinking about. I think that there are definitely people in the administration that uh, could change this, but I think that they may be more focused on other things. It doesn't, and that's the problem. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't, it treats it as, you know, oh, these people exist, but they're not here. There are other people, there, there are other groups, and oh, we should be compassionate towards them, but it's very much an ostracizing sort of thing. Um, the idea that obviously nobody in this class has a mental illness and that's really uncomfortable when you're a person sitting in that class who does for mental illness and feeling like you are the, the, uh, the other. Yeah, it gets glossed over very much and if it doesn't get glossed over, it gets treated as an inconvenience. Um, I think the psych curriculum and just the way that the psych, the psych class is taught needs to be more inclusive of all, all perspectives on life and all experiences and backgrounds. The class needs to be conscious of including everybody's background, you know, including the fact that we all have different experiences with mental illness and that mental illness in this psych class does not exist in a bubble. I mean, I'm guessing the majority of high school students have some kind of experience with mental illness, whether it be a mental illness they have or a mental illness a parent or sibling has. A lot of us have experienced it in some way, and so I think it's it, you can't address psychology fully and properly without addressing people's personal experiences with it. They don't really make accommodations. They don't really address the needs of students. The curriculum is set up so that um, it tells us what we need to teach and what students need to be able to do. But um, there's really nothing that indicates how we're supposed to handle certain situations or specific students that have 
um, you know, may have mental disorders that, um, you know, this would be, the curriculum would be relevant to. I think this is where uh, professional development comes in. I think teachers need to be um, aware, tuned in of things that are going on with their students. And I think there's a bunch of different ways that that can happen. It can happen through um, education and awareness in professional development. Um, you know, what are the best ways to uh, to work with students who are struggling with uh, mental disorders. Um, and I think it, some of that too is what comes naturally to the teacher, how they build student-teacher connections so that they, you know, some teachers have very good intuition about these kinds of things and others don't. Um, but in general, professional development will help kind of level the playing field where that's concerned. So um, for me, um, it's about getting to know students. It's about those relationships and having students feeling, com feeling comfortable where they can come to me and say, hey, you know, this is really tough for me. Um, and, you know, working through that so that they can get the information they need and hopefully use it to develop awareness and education for other people. Um, but yeah, that, a lot of that is on the onus of the, the teachers to, to work through those kinds of situations. I think there's different levels. There's some people who um, will tell the school system that they have a mental illness and, and what their needs are, and the school will uh, depending on the level of mental illness, may uh, may qualify as a disability, and then there's an individualized education plan that's put together to uh, make accommodations for that student. For example, kids with um, severe ADHD, it might they may have an IEP that has accommodations such as extra test time or um, testing in a separate setting or sitting at front. Um, as you get older, those same accommodations can exist if the student needs it. Now, some people are um, more private about their mental illness and don't necessarily, or their mental illness doesn't qualify them as a um, disability status in the school system. For those kids, they oftentimes find um, that they can, um, or they might need help, but they can get in a relationship with a guidance counselor. And so oftentimes guidance counselors work with students to, if you're upset, then you can come in and we can talk about it and work through it and hopefully keep you in the school for the day. Um, now, with limited resources in the school, it can become very difficult to make accommodations for everybody. And when you have large class sizes um, and teachers spread too thin, then oftentimes children with mental illness um, become uh, are more challenging and therefore um, sometimes get labeled as the bad kid or the problem kid um, and don't get the help that they need. Um, so in order for you to get the help that you need, um, kids and parents need to really communicate to the school to the level that they're comfortable with what's going on and what uh, accommodations or what help they think that the student might need in order to be successful at school. The overarching thing that I would like to see change would be more resources in the school. Um, more social workers, more guidance counselors, um, more smaller class sizes so teachers can provide a little bit more of that extra um, kind of emotional and developmental support as opposed to only academics. Um, I find that different schools have different strengths. There are some schools that um, can really support kids who have some different needs. Um, 
and work with them. And then there's other schools that um, aren't as good with that. So I think that all administrators and school personnel need some training in um, different mental illnesses and diversity acceptance. And um, oftentimes there's just really simple things um, that you can do that can really help someone who is having some struggles for mental illness. 